Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fisher. Welcome to bonus weather video number three today as we wrap up our series on radar. And today, I'm going to be talking about the uh, comparisons between television Doppler radars and the National Weather Service Doppler radars because there are some important differences. And the reason for this video is not to be critical or necessarily affirming of either one, just trying to point out the pros and cons of both so that you can make an informed decision when you are consuming these various products. So uh, if any feathers are ruffled by this video, that certainly is not my intent, okay? So let's go on ahead here and get started. And there are three areas that we're going to address today. The first one is something called attenuation, which means that the signal has trouble getting through one storm to see another one beyond it, okay? So we'll start with that. Then we'll talk about the importance of the location of radars and how there is one city in North Carolina uh, that actually is at somewhat of a disadvantage. We'll talk about that. And then finally, the timeliness of the data. How old is the data when you are actually looking at it, either on an app or on television or wherever? Okay, so those are the three subjects we will start with attenuation. So here's my poor man's representation of a weather radar, okay? And we have two hypothetical thunderstorms. Let's say one is 20 miles from the radar and another one is 40 miles from the radar. Just, you know, it doesn't really matter, but just uh, as an example, a hypothetical. So the signal goes out from the radar. Oh, and by the way, before I uh, get into this, the National Weather Service radars, when they send out their pulse, that pulse has a wavelength of 10 centimeters. So if you look at, like at a wave pattern, the wavelength between one crest of the wave to the next crest of the wave is 10 centimeters, okay? And then television station radars are at a wavelength of five centimeters. And there are some really, really important differences here as to the physics that a wavelength difference can actually make. So again, we have our radar, we have the two storms, we're going to start off with the National Weather Service radar. So it sends out a signal, bumps into that first thunderstorm, part of the signal bounces back to the radar, and it gets a very good representation of the intensity of that storm. But because it is at a wavelength of 10 centimeters, it is less prone to attenuation. So a good part of that signal is able to make it through the first thunderstorm, get to the second one behind it, and get an accurate representation of the intensity of that one as well, okay? So, and 10 centimeter radars are not cheap, okay? They're prohibitively expensive for most, if not all, television stations, and that's why they go uh, with the C-band option. Uh, S-band is 10 centimeters, C-band is five. So now, uh, and this simply reiterates what I just said, a significant portion of the energy makes it through the first storm, giving an accurate representation of the intensity of the second storm. Now, let's go to television station radars, which are at a wavelength of five centimeters. In this case, it has no problem seeing the intensity of the one that's closest to it, but an awful lot of the energy is absorbed by that first storm and is unable to get to the second one, okay? And so much less power is able to make it to the second storm. Therefore, we get much less of a return and a underestimation of the intensity of that storm. And I saw this with my own eyes many times over the period of time that we had our own radar. And the lucky thing was this, that WRAL's radar was almost on top of where the National Weather Service radar was. So we could do a lot of direct comparisons. And if it was really pouring or coming down hard, and that signal couldn't get through that, then what was on the other side showed up as much, much weaker than it actually was. And so in those situations, I would defer to the National Weather Service radar because if I'm in Roanoke Rapids and I've got a big storm bearing down on me, I really don't want to see a radar image that is underestimating the intensity of that storm. I want to see a radar image which tells me how strong it is and when it's going to get here. And so I always sort of looked at uh, at our radar as being a complement uh, to the National Weather Service radar, not in competition with it at all. It can't compete, okay? The National Weather Service radar can do all sorts of things that a television Doppler radar can't do, okay? And so, you know, again, it was very helpful to have it, 
But there were certain situations where the National Weather Service radar simply provided a better image and a more accurate representation of what was actually going on. Okay, so the first storm absorbs most of the energy. Very little gets through to the second storm, thus displaying a much weaker second storm. Now, this uh, actual map here is from an app called Radar Scope, which is one of my favorite apps. And it has access to all the National Weather Service radars all over the United States. Okay, so you can see Raleigh off to the right here, and here's Charlotte, and so forth. Now, the National Weather Service radar and the WRAL radar, as well as the WTVD radar, are almost in exactly the same location, okay? And it is near Clayton, okay, just down Highway 70, okay? But Charlotte, the closest radar to Charlotte is 81 and a half miles away at Greenville Spartanburg, okay? And I don't know if you can read this or not, but it says the beam height is 4,800 feet, okay? Which means that Anything under 4,800 feet, it can't see very well, okay, if at all. So luckily, there, are, uh, or there is something called a terminal Doppler radar that is actually at the airport in Charlotte. It's not nearly as powerful as a regular 10-centimeter uh, or 5-centimeter radar, but it does help to fill in that hole a little bit. But what I wanted to point out here is that the usefulness of a television station radar in Charlotte is much, much greater uh, than it is, say, in Raleigh, because they are helping to fill in that hole so that they can sample the atmosphere in those lowest levels, which is something that the National Weather Service radar in Greenville Spartanburg cannot do, okay? Uh, but in a situation like we have in Raleigh, where all the radars are almost in exactly the same location, there's no need, uh, in a sense, to fill in a hole, because you've got three radars that are all operating from the same location, and so as a result, um, you know, there's no clear advantage from a location standpoint, whereas in Charlotte, there definitely is. Okay, now we're going to talk about the timeliness of the data. In the old days, and this is when the National Weather Service Doppler radars were first rolled out in the 1990s, and, uh, and this was the case all the way up till about 2014, the National Weather Service radars would perform a volume scan, which took as much as six minutes to complete. Now, what do I mean by a volume scan? Well, the radar would be at the lowest level, and it would swing around, sample the atmosphere, and then it would tilt up a little bit and swing around, and then tilt up a little bit and swing around and get all the way up to 19 and a half degrees. Well, the problem with that was that we only got a new image of the lowest elevation every six minutes, okay? Now think about this hypothetically. If a tornado is moving at 60 miles an hour and you're looking at an image that is six minutes old, the location of that tornado is gonna be six miles off, which is not good, okay? Okay, so local TV radars only scan that lowest elevation, okay? And it takes maybe a little bit more than a minute to go all the way around. So local TV radars only scan the lowest elevation and thus could provide much more timely updates on the location of severe storms. If you're comparing an image that's one minute old as opposed to six minutes old, that's a huge difference. And that was a big, big advantage back in the day. But <laughs> times have changed. So introduce SAILS, which is an acronym. You knew there had to be one, right? SAILS stands for Supplemental Adaptive Intravolume Low Level Scan, okay? Now, what that means is that the radar will start off at the lowest level, tilt up, swing around, tilt up, swing around, and then go back down to that lowest level, okay? And then it'll resume the volume scan and do, you know, do, do, and do, and then it'll come back down to the bottom again. And you can actually add, depending on who the radar operator is, you can add up to three additional low-level scans within the five or six minutes that the volume scan is going on. So during a volume scan, the radar antenna can return to the lowest elevation up to three additional times within one volume scan. So three extra low-level scans mean you have new images of that lowest level arriving every 75 to 90 seconds. 
which is not that different from the amount of time that it takes a television station radar to make one rotation, one full rotation. So the time advantage now has pretty much gone to nothing, okay? It was a huge advantage before 2014, before this new technology was introduced. But now, if you're getting images every, what, minute and 15 seconds to a minute and 30, uh, you know, and, and the television station radar is updating a little over every minute, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, they're only going to employ the National Weather Service, this strategy, in a severe weather situation, but that's when you want it the most, okay? That's when you want to be able to display where these different features are, okay? So if you hear a claim by any television station that they can provide information to you up to six minutes sooner than everybody else, that simply is not true anymore. It used to be, okay? But that is old promo material, all right? It just is not the case anymore. And so uh, I think that's important information for you to have um, because there is still some of that going on out there. And it's not to say that one you know, radar is better than another or whatever. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's where the technology has taken us. It is what it is, and there's no getting around that. So again, a local TV radar usually makes one lo low level scan uh, in about a minute or slightly more than that, okay? And so it's about a wash. So what was once a huge advantage for television radars has more or less vanished, okay? That from a timeliness standpoint, it really is six and one, one half dozen of another. All right, there are your credits. That is bonus weather video numero three for this week. And the next one will be coming up on Monday. We'll be starting a new topic. I haven't decided what it is yet, but I'll come up with something over the weekend. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your Friday, an even better weekend. And of course, the daily weather update will be coming up later on this afternoon. So you all take care, folks, and we'll talk to you soon. See you later.